Okay, um, so maybe first of all we start off, just, could you just tell us a little bit about, I suppose, your earliest memories of the church? Uh, we'll we start with you, Katie, just talking about, uh, did you get married here or did you? Did you get did married you get here, Mum? No, in the parish. Okay. So when did you move into the parish? Um, 1959, okay. I came into the parish. And what kind of... Um, I can't hear him talking at the He can't probably hear you that far away. Oh, okay. So will I speak up a bit louder? Yeah, yeah, probably. Can you hear me now? Can you hear him now? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, uh, in 1959, I mean, what was the parish like from your memory? It was a very happy parish. It was a lovely place to go to Mass in. And everyone, there were lovely neighbours that we used to come here, you know. Three of my daughters got married here. And my husband, um, he had a reparation site here and he had a pilgrim, village, pilgrim version going to the different houses, seeing the rosary. And um, it was a, ha a heavenly place. Okay. There was a holy hour here every for Saturday and the church would be full. And Paddy, he was clerk here, my husband, and the, he'd have the altar beautiful for the, you know, the holy hour for the people. And uh, there was uh, the committee then over the home, lots in the parish arrangement, um, all very helpful. Paddy went to Ronnie Fortner and he went to. Uh, Michael O'Doherty for the building for the women in the home. And everyone pitched in, you know. Okay. So tell, tell us a bit about that home, because people wouldn't know about that. They, they had in cookers, only little fires, very run down, and uh, no television, and uh, no fridges. So we had a once-off collection in the city, and... Uh, Got the money that way, a lot did help without being paid. I can't remember, but they, they were very good. Yeah. And uh, we were able to buy fridges, freezers, television, cookers, get the carpet, get the place painted, and it'd be lovely. Shower room and a television. And this was for old, was it old ladies? Yes. Yeah. Okay. There were six old ladies in it, Chrissy. Flaherty, she was a cripple. Poor Maggie Morrissey, she was like a town woman, getting stuff out of the bins. She was in a good shepherd all her life, and the hit her on the head was her, an iron bar. And she was very, very shook and blind. Mm. So she was delighted. And then there was Mary Wall, she was the housekeeper for the priest when she retired. And Mrs. Rocket from the country, and um, Miss White, Doctor White's sister, was in it, and uh, they all had great comfort after that. And, and that was right next to the yeah, the ladies' so. home. Okay. Forty-four years it was open. She was born two months after. That's how I know. Yeah. And um, we had a dinner dance St. Patrick's night when it was finished and uh, anyone could go went and it was lovely to get together with all of them and then to St. Patrick's Day we got the float from Willie O'Brien in Stephen Street and uh, for the parade it was lovely and um, when to be a special day or after the Holy Week Paddy would have all the altar done Beautiful, the whole lot. And I was with Helen's mammy, another kitty. And we went and got the flowers and we dyed, dyed them green for St. Patrick's Day to have the altar. The altars were lovely. And then the, the choir, we had flag days. We had everything to raise money. Yeah. And everyone helped, almost everyone in the parish helped. And my husband, Paddy, was with Tommy Cavanagh, the Odeon Cafe now. They're gone and uh, 
They were here so late one night. Cassie came over with sausages and chips. She couldn't get in. She rang the church bell and got him to open. <laughs> it's all there, it's near midnight. And that's what she did to get in. But that's the kind they were. That, that was before mobile phones. <laughs> yes, yeah, no mobile phones. <laughs> but overall, the people were so happy here. And, and just, uh, just to go on and help, just, I mean, what's your earliest memories of the church growing up, you know, in the parish? What was your... Um, you go first. Well, my earliest memories, I suppose, were, would be of my, my father and my uncles. Tommy Burns, my father, and Paddy and Josie Burns, my uncles. And they were very involved in the church and had a great affection for the church. And, you know, as you know, it was always known as the little chapel, whereas the cathedral was the big chapel. Mm -hmm. And um, they would be involved here. My father was an altar boy uh, here for a very long time. I think he was nearly 17 when he finished up. Um, my mum was in the choir, I was in the choir, but I remember them talking about the, the chapel and just the sense of affection uh, for it and how committed they were to it. And, you know, my uncles, Paddy and Joyce, used to joke each other because when the appointments for the priests and the diocese were coming out, they used to say to each other, I heard you were getting the red hat next, you know, that they were going to be cardinals, they were so, they were so involved. And then, you know, obviously I made my Holy Communion here, there were seven of us, and um, I was in the, in the choir, and like Kitty was saying, um, the Holy Hour would be down at that, and there was something called the Quarantori, wasn't that? It was like a 40-hour right. uh, yeah. Yeah, kind of vigil, I suppose, mm. and you'd come in at a certain hour and then at the end with the choir would sing and, was this and all of that. Was that for Easter? Uh, no, it, I can't remember when it was, but it, it was, a, yeah, I, I don't know, but oh. it was, a, I think it was kind of maybe a You see, Paddy, Paddy, had a pa Paddy had a job in the city, yeah, his school attendance officer, so mm. they said to him, the powers that be, you can't do the two things, so he gave it up. He gave up being Clark. Yeah. Uh, he's doing it part time, like, you know, after work and before work. So that's when things dwindled a bit. There'd be nobody, like, took over completely. Uh, but, uh, and growing in your own memory? Um, well, probably similar to Helen, like, there was an involvement in the family ever before when you came along. It was, there was already an involvement, and um, we kind of followed suit. I was the, the, the fourth of four girls, so there was an involvement there. We were in the the choir, and I joined at a certain young... I do remember having to get the day off the choir to make my communion here, you know, and we, I made my communion. There was two in the parish only that day making their communion, myself and one other, uh, Joan Collins, not, not the famous Joan Collins, but another... <laughs> Um, a, a local, and um, but like it was, it was always like that. Two people make things. It was always a small parish, um, and but it was a great sense of community. There still is, um, and obviously people have spread their wings and gone in other places in the town. But at that time when we grew up, like there was the old ladies' home. Like our involvement at that stage, we would have come down to visit them and run over to Darris to get the groceries for them. And they were like friends, you know, the, the, the old old ladies. We got made friends of them, and that's the. That's kind of the involvement that was there, you know, and it wasn't like a job. You'd say, well, can I run down today to do it for them? You know, because they were just lovely. It was a lovely kind of a sense of community, whatever. But like that, we were in the choir and you'd come in the back um, lane and come down the steps on the Saturday morning for the rehearsal and you'd sing at the, the masses. In those days, there wasn't Saturday night, it was only Sunday. Um, and there was just... They were your friends from the street and they came with you to the choir, you know, and then, you know, we all grew up together. So it was just that sense of community, um, probably a little bit different these days than it was those, because everything was so close knit, you know, in, in those days. But um, yeah, it just, it went up there. I, I myself was married here. I don't know, was, were we one of the last few? That was 2006. I know there hasn't been a lot of um, celebrations since those years, you know, it was few and far between. But mum and dad did get to celebrate their 50th wedding um, renewal, the yeah, anniversary of their 50th in 2009, yeah. which was definitely one of the last celebrations here. Um, you know, but it was lovely just to have that span um, over so many years, you know, with, with the families, like from 1959 to 2009. Um, but all my sisters w would have also been involved with the choir and that as well, and the involvement with the old ladies' home. And then there was, was would have been fundraising ever before, like when m I was only born, as Mammy said, when the, the old ladies' home was open and all the fundraising was done for that. And then down the line, the church itself, 
um, had started to dilapidate and there was some damp problems, so there was the church restoration fund. Mm -hmm. And we would have done um, carol singing um, when there was the cars passing down, down the street, when it was um, motorised. And I can, I can remember that very clearly. I'm probably only seven or eight, but I do remember those, that, those times. And there was boxes in all the commercial units in town, maybe in the post office. And even some were still there up to very recently. We only, we only realised that some people kept the boxes on their, their tills, maybe in Joni Walls and places like that around locally. But they had the little St. Patrick's Church Restoration Fund little box and that, that would have helped to do some of the works that were done from the parish during those years, the 80s and 90s, to kind of keep it on its feet. But a lot of the committee that were there did a lot of hands-on work themselves, you know. Um, they could, there was painters and there was different people who would have come to do work. And then the, the St. Patrick's Day, we would have entered a float into the St. Patrick's Day parade. So the parish had a float and like that, Mr. O'Brien in the street would have left. Really? We had it. Willie O'Brien would have left to use the, the um, we're just trying to figure out how they did it, but they had the lorry, lorry. and they carried the St. Patrick's statue from here up and put it on the lorry and somebody would have been picked within the parish to stand on the, the, the lorry and go around. In the and parade. Mary was playing the We have some photos of that. Mary was playing, playing the guardian one year, yes, yeah, she the was. In 2012. But we were very proud of the parish. We were very, it might have been a small church, but there was great mm. pride and a great love, and it still is there with, with whoever is, is left, you know, um, it's a giant parish within its own circle, but there's other people have spread within the town, and there's still that love, I, I do believe, within... And obviously, at that time, too, there was a much bigger population in the centre of town. Yeah, mm. yeah. And there were a lot more yeah. people living here yes. in the centre Absolutely. than mm. now. Um, and I suppose mm. that probably contributed to the downfall of the parish, to the fact that people, people started moving to the yeah. John's Park or Liz Dogan and different places. Yeah. Um, well, I suppose that was one, one mm. of the elements there that, yeah. you know, there wasn't such a huge population. And the other was then the lack of vocations, I suppose. There weren't an yeah. awful lot of priests there. And then, mm. you know, a lot of money was needed to keep the church yeah. uh, going. And, I mean, we did fight for a yeah. long time to try and uh, keep still, the parish as St. Patrick's. And, yeah, Grania <laughs> really tries to, to you know, yeah. to keep that going and the idea of the parish going. Because sometimes we feel, you know, it, it is not so, recognised yeah. anymore, you know. Mm. It was subsumed into the cathedral at one stage. Yeah. And uh, now we even feel yeah. the name is not even mentioned sometimes, you know. Yeah. So, um, you know, and people are sad about that because, Very as sad, we said, yeah. you know, there was a great affection for the place and there was a great community spirit. And just when we're talking about the choir, I have some photos now, um, belong to my dad, of the altar boys and the choir from the 1930s, 1938, 1940, yeah. that kind of time. And then I have photos of when I was a child in the choir, which would be probably the early 60s. And, yeah. you know, the, the same sense of community and some of the same people are there. Gerard Nugent, who had the shop on Patrick Street. Um, yeah. Marie and Phil Breslin, who, who had the, the pub and the shop there. Um, you know, so that sense was always there. And even then, there's a later one um, in Grange's time mm -hmm. um, in the choir and on a choir outing. Um, um, there, it was to Dunmore, I think, you know, and my yeah. mother, Mrs. Forrest, a, a lot of the women who were in the choir were all, were all there and, you know, still with that spirit. And then, yeah. you know, I suppose, yeah. as the... We don't want to let it go, I suppose, is yeah, what we're trying. Yeah, we're not we're ready to let it go, really. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, and I suppose just one thing to do, I suppose, we're, if the parish is kind of looking with the priests Absolutely. that it had over the years, there was a lot of good priests. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was never any scandals or anything like that associated with the church God, no. in, in, in no. St. Patrick's. No. Not within our so, parish, no. Mm. No, there was never any. Uh, mm. No, no, no. no. But the heart fell out. It was all when we got word that was condemned. Yeah. By you know the officer came up and took the heart out. It was all. So Paddy then was approached a couple of times with different people who had uh, young boys and clubs and rooms. Would they give it to him just for the night? They wouldn't. And then, uh, the home, the, the home, home, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Just the, once the, the war, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Once the that came, everything went downhill. They said the reason they said it was that if the old room had a fire, they wouldn't get down the steps in time, and then there's are gates at each, of them. Okay. and that was the reason the fire chief gave us, and that was the end of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. <coughs> and. 
you know, in some of those photographs in the 1940s, Father Farrell is in them, and he seemed to have a big impact mm -hmm. on the parish when he was there. He was a very vibrant man and mm -hmm. full of life. And he later moved to, to Ballybrickenard, the Holy Family, and he set up the carnivals. Well, he created the Holy Family. Yes, and the yeah. carnivals, I think, were to raise money to, to build up the, the, the church there. So he, he, was, he was there. Um, we had great help with the priest, Father Romani and Kevin yeah. Cody. And when we go in after singing, he'd have a big teapot of tea waiting to give us. And he'd come to all the house every Christmas morning, old friend. Yeah, come in, to see, you know, that, yeah, you, yeah, you, it, was, yeah. it was lovely times. Love that, yeah. And the children used to call that priest Daddy Cody, I don't know if you remember that. And he'd go around, he'd greet every child and he might give but, you a yeah. little sweet. And, you know, there, yeah. there was a lovely spirit. And, and you know, he, he, was, he was very nice to me when I was, was yeah. leaving to go to Cork and, you know, mm -hmm. um, drove me up one time for a registration and all of that kind of thing. So, you know, there was that kind of commitment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Father Doherty, Father Hanrahan, Father Power. So it's an awful you know, lot of love in the people. There was. There yeah, was yeah, 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 and involvement. Absolutely. I suppose maybe just to talk a little bit about that, I mean, there was a lot of poverty around at that time. I'm talking about the 50s and going into the, uh, even into the 60s, there was a lot of poverty around the centre of Waterford. Mm -hmm. You know, like old buildings, tenement buildings, all that kind of stuff. Yes. I mean, so there was like, like there wasn't, uh, people didn't have an awful lot. No. Um, do you have any memory of that, Kitty, when you came to Waterford? I haven't. Okay. But I mean, you were saying about that old man's home, the, the Brown The Brown Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was doing um, the script for 1916 in City Hall and uh, Ned Olsen and Fabio, and he was the mayor at the time. And one of my d days I had to go up with him, he got £50, and I had to witness the poor man, uh, Eddie Foley, and he was in the bed with a bag of turf on him. They were so poor. The people were so poor, you know, all old men. It's not there anymore. But that's the way it was. And yet, the way we were able to do the home with the people helping, yeah. you know, like I was telling Helen, the mayor John Gloucester got a food big ship for food. I was only twelve, I remember at the time, and all the water was down the quay to get this food, and it was the first time I ever saw meat in a tin, mm, you know, yeah. corned beef in a tin, and. After the war, you see, everybody was low, every way. Every way now, you know. He was a great mayor, John Gloucester, God and, bless him. And he brought in a ship of food. He got in a ship in Waterford for food. His son is Mark from Ark, you have the yeah, story. Brandon, yeah, Brandon. a marvellous man for Waterford. He was, he was the only one ever to like that. And his wife then was the librarian? Yes. Mrs. Gloucester. That's right. <coughs> That's right. Yeah, I One of the wizards, I think, he married. The hearty people, I think they called her. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was a librarian in the library in yes. Lady Lane. Yes. Right. And come here, um, uh, I was going to say about the. We were talking about something there, Jess. What were we talking about? The poverty thing. Um, oh. oh, yeah. In the film, you know the film that the. the um, about the parish that was made in two, 2001. Remember the, the reunion? The St. Patrick's reunion. Mm. Remember the St. Oh, Patrick's reunion, yeah. Philip? Yeah. Um, yeah. We didn't come to it because it said only people in the parish under, in, uh, up to 1950. 60. And we were only married in 59. Okay. And afterwards they said we should have went. But yeah. Paddy being the man, he'd be everything had to be done perfect, you know. Yeah. And we didn't go to it. Okay. But There's a video of it. Yeah. yeah. In that film they mentioned about emigration. I mean, would there be, uh, there was, it seemed to be, a, the, I mean, I remember when the prayers of the faithful was about all the people from the parish who emigrated. I mean, was that, Helen, would you have any memory of that? I mean, well, I, I don't really have a memory of that, but I know my own father spent five years working in England in the early 50s. And, you know, I would hear, hear them talking about 
going down on the Great Western, the big oh, ship yeah. that was down there and waving the, them off and all of the that. The cattle boat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I know one of my uncles, Jack, did the same thing. And my grandfather, the story is that at 75, he went away to England mm -hmm. to work and tamed the animal gang. That's what they say. <laughs> That's the story. Um, so just from that sense, and then my father would speak... They, they stayed in um, old aircraft hangars in Castle Donington, which was a, a, an airport during the war. And they stayed there and, you know, he would speak uh, about what it was like working there and, and a lot of Polish people there as, as, uh, as uh, well. Um, I, I, so I don't like really hostels, recall. Like they were like hostels. They were hostels, mm -hmm. yes. And um, that, you know, and they had some stories uh, uh, about that. And... Oh, the you know Christmas cards I I have at home that my father sent to my mother and cards you know when they were when they were away, um, but that's really the only sense of emigration okay. I had. But I I think. But it was kind of know, normal in the fifties. It, it was it was fairly normal I'd say for yeah. the men to to go and get work, particularly yeah. in in England. Yeah. You know, uh, we would have had some cousins from Kilmac Thomas who went to America, but. Um, I wouldn't really have much experience of that. Okay. Yeah. And just, you know, growing up here in the parish, would you have been conscious of the parish's history? Like, in the sense of, like, you know, this place has got a lot of links with Newfoundland and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Is there any talk about that? Or, or even the whole penal law stuff and all that? Kind of? Well, yeah, you know, the yes, story, but I don't know yeah. how, how historically correct it was, but the yeah. idea was that during the penal laws, that, um, you know, this was a, originally a grain store and that mm -hmm. mass was heard here in yeah. secret. And that's why it was in a laneway because, you know, it wasn't want, didn't want to be known publicly that there was a service going on. And yeah. then afterwards, then the Jesuits took it over and, and the green store became this little church. I mean, that would be the kind of story we'd, we'd mm. have heard. You know, I don't know historically how correct it is, but that's what they yeah. would have said. Um, yeah, we always heard about Newfoundland and, and because you know, our families were involved in the parish, they had access to the parish records and they would see and say to us that people came back from Newfoundland either to marry or to have children baptised or that kind of um, thing. And you know the old story about they speak with the Waterford accent mm -hmm. and all of that. We would have heard that type okay. of thing, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And just, I mean, I know this is a sad bit, but just the whole thing about the end of the parish. Could you just talk a little bit about that because it is very sad. I mean, the fact that here you had this community, very active, very much a part of the inner city, and then just how it finished. Could you just talk a little bit about that? Katie, do you want to talk first about the end of the parish? The end of the parish. You know, how it finished and how sad that the was. parish kind of finished up. I, I don't know really now. I kind of, it's a blank to me, you know. I don't know. There wasn't kind of, I, I, not that I'm aware, I know I was out of the parish when I married, but I, I moved out of the parish for a number of years, yeah. but I was still involved through Mammy, but um, it didn't we take weren't interest. really aware of a very definite no. date that, mm, you know, no. this is going to happen and this mm. is going to close and that there was any it's notification. It's a terrible sad time for us, you know. know? Mm. Um, but I think, like that we said, people moved away, mm. you know, the parish itself got smaller, people mm. got older, you know, mm. so the numbers went down, mm. the number of priests has reduced down, you know, but there was, in the dwindling years, there was a light, I could see anyway, in the mm. tunnel, because I had different involvement, I had been involved in the choir here, and I had other friends who would have been involved in the cathedral youth uh, choir, and on occasions, like Christmas Eve was a big a big celebration here mm. and whether you were living here or the Dunmore Road or wherever you might have travelled to in the city the church was full to the door mm. here upstairs it was a, a beautiful celebration mm. um father Tim O'Reard and uh, like in in later years I, I mean you know just before kind of things finished up in the run-up to that there was some lovely celebrations and they they pushed the boat out I think who would have been there prior to the, the demise, I suppose, of, of it. But, um, like, there was some beauty, and you would meet people that you mightn't necessarily have met, you know, on a regular basis, whereas we would have met them in our everyday years ago when we were younger, mm. and they'd come back for those masses, you know. And um, mm. we'd love something maybe not every day and, and or every when week. That, when was that last one? 
Um, I God, the, the last one to get a date, I, I could check out, and I, I, I definitely will give you a definite date. But off the top of my head, I'm not great. But like, I know we had the fifty years with yourself, two thousand and nine, and we had our own wedding, two thousand and six, and I would say maybe. Possibly 2002, 2003, those years might have been the last of those Christmas celebrations. But I'd like to have a definite date myself just to know, to know for definite. But it would have been around those years that, that the Christmas mass, the big Christmas mm. mass kind of finished, you know. And it was like he invited the youth to come and there was kids here and they were told to go home for Santa. And there was a lovely exactly. celebration, but it was the yeah. amount of people that came here for that. You know, because it was a big deal, you know, and there was an involvement that spread around but people came back you know, just for those those special times. And I think that's really, we'd love something like that. I think maybe a Christmas mass mm -hmm. or a mass for St. Patrick's Day. They can't, they and that would be good enough because we understand there's a shortfall. We understand mm -hmm. there's only so but many people. There's no but there's nothing, there's nothing. And there, there's also refusal mm -hmm. of, of services when we request maybe a, an anniversary mass or a wedding or a funeral. We, can't we have them been, here. We yeah. have been told no, you know, so. Mm -hmm. And that's sometimes that was when people found out Oh, we're not allowed to use the church anymore. Mm, yeah. It was mm. only at that yeah. point. It was a very silent. It happened very silently. Mm, yeah. The sadness um, of it killed you know, us all, didn't yeah. it? We would have we liked to be told. Terrible we weren't really sadness. told. Yeah. Told nothing. To you know, talk. Yeah. yeah. Just kind but of dwindled out. Yeah. You know. But I remember originally, you know, when this was starting to break, really, that mm. that there were going to be fewer masses first of all in the church, mm. and uh, the committee then, you know, had numerous meetings with the priests and with yeah. the bishop and trying mm. to work something out. And I remember one of the priests said to my father, which there was only six in the church, and my father quoted the Bible and said, it says, if one or two are gathered yeah, together, the there I am. Mm. And But sure, then it started with mm. fewer masses, mm. right? And mm. then no masses. And uh, as Gronje said, we had the lovely Christmas celebrations and then they stopped. Um, mm. Now, I've been at a baptism here about 2012, 2013. So there was one or two mm. things yeah. that, no, not Since then, it has kind of deadly silence with yeah, it. And, yeah. and, and then, I suppose, as Gronia said, when we went to look for anniversary masses here, um, and we were just told no, and, you know, personally, I had written to a number of the priests, phoned them, the priests, and said, could I have one anniversary mass here? And the answer was basically no. Um, mm -hmm. No priests available, no insurance, yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know, costs of heating and, yeah. and, and all of that. So it, it was a sadness. And, it is a uh, sadness, yeah. We and would we, like if there was something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's been a lot mm -hmm. of involvement over the years, obviously, and, and, and we feel, you know, even something like that on an occasion that it's not a large community anymore so there will be very few and far between requests will be made so it's not going to be an everyday request or an every week request it might be a very rare thing but, but, but you there's know there's, there's still a manpower I mean the sense of yeah. their aunts or grannies or uncles or whatever yeah. would have come from this parish yeah. so mm. there could be a potential for a annual mm. event mm. absolutely or biannual, I'll always ask for more. <laughs> yeah, We'd love something to. like that yeah, would be yeah. lovely, and people would come back for it. I'd yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So just yeah. To, just to finish off, I mean, any kind of memories? Just like any, can you any nice memories or All funny nice stories memories. that you can associate with the parish, with the church, or with the parish that you, or with the church? I mean, just with the church. I had to take one with Tony, your brother, and Tony was a great altar boy. <laughs> But when he moved up to Reed, do you remember when? Do you remember that? I don't remember, no. God. <laughs> but poor Tony, anyway, he kept fainting every time he went to Reed. Okay, right? <laughs> And uh, this, this continued on for, he came back again a few months later and he tried again and he fainted. <laughs> so it was like the whole church was there waiting to see what Tony yeah, Reed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He used to have uh, the choir with outings and Mr. Um, Lee, the man in the survive was the manager, and um, what's his name there, the tall dark man. He was there. They used to go off on outings mm -hmm. with all the, the children and the choirs, and we had great sport. You yeah, know, great and that stopped. Yeah. 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 Mr. Power and Mrs. Power had the organ. Little old woman, she come over and play. 
And just to be lovely. Yeah. The managers of I yeah. were there with us and all of them there. Is he Mr. Devlin or was he? Devlin, Mr. that's Dev it. Devlin, Frank yeah, Devlin. Yeah. Yeah, and of course Nancy Nolan, Nancy Nolan from yeah. after Mrs. Power, she took over, and um, you know she did great work with the, with the mm. choir. We used to even have Christmas parties, and we'd sing we and we'd perform and all of that kind of thing. And she got that all going, and mm. we used yeah. to make masks and down in her house, mm. she would she Frank would do all Jeffrey of that. And, and Mrs. Yeah. Power, yeah. and where there. were the parties taking part? Where were they having? Well, one I remember was in Edwards Pub, the Wander Inn. <laughs> When the gone. Well, that that's people. Okay. Okay. Anyway, go on, but, uh, yeah, that's where I remember one of them. And then as I said, we used to practice and, and get the decorations and everything ready in her in her house on the on the manor. And it was a real yeah. family and community. But another funny story that you're, you it's not that far back, but you know the tabernacle there. The, the curtain, the cloth inside the tabernacle got caught in the door, right? And the priest couldn't open it to take out the, the, oh. the chalice and the, and the, the communion. Of course, um, you know, my father was sitting in the community here and he went up to try help. And we were all sitting here as well. And, you know, the young child was saying, oh, God, that, oh, God, that. And he was pulling at him, pulling at it, and I could see him falling backwards and landing on his back. But eventually he got uh, it open and the priest was right to say thank you very much. But he says, as he was coming down, there were some of the older ladies with their hats on sitting in the front seat and they were all smiling at him and laughing. He said he felt like he was a hero. <laughs> so that was one he told. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we had fun. Of course, we'd be chatting in the choir during the services sometimes, and you know oh, the yeah, priest would be yeah. glaring in at us and all of that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. It was a lovely memory. place yeah, and, and a, a lovely Absolutely. sense of community here. And then, wasn't there a thing too at Easter where they used to do the kind of a, what do you call it? The uh, where they used to act out mm -hmm. the um, what do you call it? the stations to cross and all that. Remember in, at Easter they mm -hmm. had a kind of ritual. Yeah. Do you remember this? Do you remember that? Yeah. And the stations well, of the cross. Where people used to speak, you know, do all the, you know, the take the parts. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. I mean, I mean that, that happens a, a lot of places now, yeah. but it, it did happen here, and yeah. some people were on that, that little gallery back there, yeah. and they'd take the parts of, and, you know, the crowd would crucify him, crucify him, and all this thing. And I remember the first time they brought that in, they were saying, we'd be hanging off the gallery <laughs> shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Yeah, they did that, yeah. and yeah. You know, people were involved. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, and what about, um, I mean, was there a thing where, like, funerals and all that, did they all go to a particular graveyard, or was it from each family did their own thing, or how does that work out? Imagination. Well, yeah. most, it, it would seem, on, in Carrigan Lane, where I'm from, mm -hmm. um, went to Balnanesha, and you know, there's even, um, my family were number two, and the grave next to them is from the family who was number four. So, you know, they, Balnanesha was the, the place, and that's mm. what they called it, St. Otter and Semmer. We always refer to it as Balnanesha. The yeah. lamp is getting tired. <laughs> to, <find it. laughs> <laughs> to try and to tell us well, something. Well, it's a good guy. We're overheating. About, what about then? Would there be a particular uh, funeral director, or was it different director? Well, you see, our, our family and a lot of the families there would, would have gone with um, Tom Hennessy, you know, that... that um, Johnstown? No, not Johnstown. They were in Lady Lane. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah they were in mm -hmm. Lady Lane and... Um, I where the library is now. Where the library is okay. now, yeah, okay. yeah. And, you know, he, he just said that the problem there was parking in the end and they moved out somewhere on the Carp Road, I think. But, um, you know, we, we always went with them, yeah. and still do, and we, we always had a tradition in our family that the, you spend two nights in the church, um, and we were saying, why is that? And he said, just to make sure you're really dead. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Sure. Was, was there ever a tradition of wakes in the parish? I, I don't remember that, but, you know, you remember you'd be in the house, but there weren't um, big groups of people or anything like that. 
Do they have the, the coffin? I never remember a coffin mm. in the house, but then, like, maybe the older people did, you know? Okay. But, um... Kitty, would you have any memory yeah, of that? No, I don't. No wakes no, in the house? No wakes. No. Even in Dial Street, or there wasn't any no. wakes, no? They all stayed in the church. Mm. But I'd say we, it was so We small. lost entrance very quick when it, you know, without warning, it just came on us. It was kind of, it was very sad, wasn't it, Ellen? Well, I suppose it was big My husband was in a, a, a took yeah. it very bad. Yeah. But there used to be the holy hour here every Saturday. My eldest was born for uh, the 40th year, for Saturday, you know. She brought her name at her. And anyway, the old woman said to me, when I was down with the, in the pram after, and she said, I told your husband, she said, if it ever finishes with all us here, she said, it'll happen on the Feast of Our Lady. The devil will do it. <laughs> she said now, and she was very, I haven't thought of it after. She was so engrossed in, you know, they were coming with walking sticks and crutches and cars. Very old women, but they were great for praying. Mm -hmm. But that's what she said to Paddy. Beware on the Feast of Our Lady. And come here, do, do you remember any of the Latin masses or the... Wasn't there masses as well in Irish too here at some point? Mm, do you remember any of the Latin no, masses? Or? not in Irish. Do you, yeah, remember? you remember? No. I remember the Latin I know we mass used to do because when I was, was in the choir we yeah. sang yeah. Latin we sang like hymns, too, yeah. you know. And um, yeah. you know, they and all the all the people knew and the answers and everything, yeah. you know, and um, most people felt it was nicer than the English version. But the Irish Mass, yeah, I think it was um Father de Puyer, Liam de Puyer, he was a great Irish scholar and yeah, he wrote some Irish books. Yeah, he Did yeah. he? Yeah, yeah. he was there. You yeah, were in his brother's house in your way. That's, that's right, yeah. 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 She was away and did all the houses, his brother's house she was in when she and was... Yeah. 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 yeah, and she gave you the interview in the RT, didn't they, with him? Yeah. Yeah. Did oh, that. yeah. Father de Puyer. Yeah. He gave Carl her name. The did Irish he? here and all, you know, he yeah. said, and caught. He did everything in Irish. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. I think he started the, the yeah. Irish masses here. It was mm. early in the mornings, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. they were. Mm. Yeah, they were. But I mean, a, a lot of the masses were early, early in the, yeah. the morning. Yeah. I mean, when, when my mum and dad got married, they got married at 8 o'clock in the morning and they had a wedding breakfast, you know, mm. uh, which was in, in our own house. Um, you know, so that was that's the way. What happened. That was the way, yeah. unless you were really, really wealthy, mm. I suppose. Mm. You know, but um, yeah, yeah, and there were lots of different things over the years. Yeah. And just on that thing about weddings and all that, what about photographs? I mean, do, would you have memories of Annie Brophy uh, taking pictures? Yeah. Casey, yeah. would you I remember, remember Annie Brophy, Brophy taking pictures? I do. She lived up around the corner yeah. from me in Barker Street. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Just um, just all in the the new um, the bishop's palace. Yeah. All her photos to be there, and Joe McGrath and Patty's DVD, the movies, you know, the eight millimeter movies, you know. Can you remember her <coughs> taking photos years ago? Can oh, I remember? can. Yeah. Yeah. For weddings and that. Always, she'd be hours when they made the holy communion. Yeah. You'd be sitting for hours waiting to get her photos taken. In Barker Street. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. She was a perfectionist, but she did lovely photos. Yeah. And my yeah. confirmation photo and my brother's communion photo were done by Annie Brophy, and we have that. And my parents' wedding photograph, just the two of them. And, uh, you know, at that stage, unless you were very wealthy, you didn't wear a white dress or anything. And my mother had this uh, kind of dress with coloured flowers on it. And, you know, I used to say, well, that was lovely and a different colour. And she said, but the dress wasn't actually that colour, she said, that Annie Brophy paint used to it. hand paint in some of the colours. And yeah. that, that's what she put in. So oh, we right. have that photo. Yeah. 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 And, and like, I used to think that everybody had Annie Brophy photographs. And yeah. I, I met somebody one day and he said, our family couldn't afford them. Yeah, mm. you see, that's so the thing. I, I yeah. forgot that yeah. actually she mm. charged as well. Absolutely. So, yeah. 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 You do need to have money to pay yeah. for Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 Special yeah. occasions. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, we leave it that. Yeah. Thanks very much, Kitty, and go on in and have a see you later on. Yeah. So, um,
Thanks very much for doing that. And hopefully, hopefully from this, maybe we might be able to put a little bit of pressure on the powers that be. Mm. Oh, to be lovely. Mm. The powers that be. Sit on. Show it to them. Yeah. <laughs> Sit on. Well, I suppose uh, Father Waldron did get that sign put down there, which was one of the things yeah. we asked for, uh, to be acknowledged for that. It'll take time. Aye.